I'm going to preach, and it's going to take me probably the better part of three weeks to get through this one concept. But I'm going to preach to you for the next little bit on the idea, listen to the testifier. Now it's very strange this morning that we start out with testimonies, and there's more in the building about what God is doing in your life to transform you. Because what we're going to talk about for the next couple of weeks is what the testifier does. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to John 15, chapter, chapter 15, verse 26. Stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. And we will look into the testifier. Here's what the Word said. But when the Comforters come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, <coughs> even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. The Amplified Classic Version said, But when the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Advocate, the Intercessor, the Strengthener, and the Standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes or proceeds from the Father, he himself will testify regarding me. Father, we thank you for the Word of God today. I pray, God, that you would open our eyes, that we could hear in our ears, that we could understand what the Word of God says to us. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of every individual in this room would manifest himself to your people. <coughs> God, I pray that the will of God, which is the sending of the Holy Spirit, the agreement in the name of Jesus, would manifest itself to your people while we preach. Now, Father, we thank you for the anointed Word of God. It's not the anointed man. It's the anointed Word. And I thank you for it today. Bless us while we hear from the Holy Spirit. And we will praise you now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. Jesus promised in John 14, 16 that He would ask the Father and He would give us another comforter, another counselor, another helper, another intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that He may remain with you forever. And that's a key phrase, that he may remain with you forever. I want to take you back one slide, and I want you to look at a couple of things. Jesus said in John 15, 26, And when the comforters come whom I will send, he will proceed, he will come out of the Father. You see that? Then Jesus turned around in John 14, 16 and said, and He will give you another comforter. He spoke to the disciples and he said, I'm going to send someone that is going to proceed from the Father, direct from God. And that individual is going to be sent to proceed and remain with you and remain in the earth until such time that Jesus returns and the Spirit of God and the, the salvation for men, the opportunity for such is lost in the earth. The Holy Spirit has never left. From the day He arrived, He proceeded from the Father, and He remains in the earth today. He is here. He is the testifier. Everything you know about God, now listen to me now, Everything you know about God came because the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. Everything you understand about the Word, you understand because the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. Let me tell you something further that is tragic. The things you do not know about the Word of God, <laughs> the things that you have not understood, the things that you have not read, they are still waiting to be revealed to you for your benefit by the Spirit of God. Every man, woman, boy, and girl has 
the opportunity to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Joel made sure that we understood that this Holy Spirit would pass nobody. It would leave nobody behind. He said your young kids will dream dreams and your old men would see visions. Not one person was to be left out of the loop of communication with the Father. Not one person. Not one soul that ever lived has lived absent from the opportunity to have the Holy Spirit show them the way to live, the way to God, the way out of sin, the way out of trouble, the way out of suffering, the way out of hurt. It's always been done through the same avenue. And the avenue is the avenue that came from God. Let me tell you something, Frank. If it comes from God, that's good enough for me. How about you? If it's sin in the name of Jesus, that's good enough for me. He proceeded and he is another comforter. Just like Jesus from the divine Godhead. From the Trinity, sent into the earth and given to man so that man could know God and God, watch this, could know man. What a great thing to know about what God has done for us. Jesus prayed the Father for another. Why would Jesus pray the Father for another comfort? Why would Jesus ask God to send another comforter into the earth? And I'm going to tell you why. Because Jesus had been the all in all for the disciples. He had been the all in all for everybody that had, had followed him. He had been their model. He had been their uh, designer. He had been their developer. When they got in trouble on the sea, he had been the one to calm the storm. When he was in the boat asleep and the waters came up, he had been the one to say, peace be still. At every hand and at every turn, Jesus had stepped in. And there he had protected them. And there the Holy Spirit had protected him. He had been the all and the all to them. But now he said, I'm going away. I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to send you something going to be better than me. Not better than me. That's a wrong term. I'm going to send you something that's going to be another me. It's going to be another means whereby you can have me with you all day, everywhere you go and in every step. But the difference was that instead of it being done in the body of a man, it was done in the spirit of man and man's spirit was changed and man was given a comforter that would be in him that Jesus said would dwell in you and be with you every step of every day, everywhere that you would ever go. What a wonderful thing to know. Well, Jesus prayed the Father through that the comforter would come. And he told us what the comforter would do. And if you look at the elements of the comforter, you're going to see the life of Jesus Christ in the life of the disciples. You're going to see exactly what Jesus did. He was a counselor. He was a helper. He was an intercessor. He was an advocate. He was a strengthener. And he was a standby. He did all of those things. But the Holy Spirit would come in specific roles. Today I'm only going to talk about number one. He would come. Now watch this. Because until I began to dive into this, this is something I never heard before. He would come in the name of Jesus. He would come in the name of... Now, we've all heard the preaching on the name of Jesus to the believer. We've all heard about the power of attorney that was given to us by Jesus Himself in Mark chapter 16. And we've heard about the fact that that power of attorney would be such to us that when we invoke the name, it would be done with the same privilege and power that, Je that, that, that Jesus had given us and the fivefold blessings that Jesus had provided for us in Mark chapter 16. And that was wonderful. But then I began to look into this thing and I found out that the Holy Ghost came in the exact same name and authority that Jesus, now watch this, there is an agreement in the earth. Now watch me now. <coughs> in heaven, all of the 
things that Jesus stands for as the mediator, the intercessor, the standby, the counselor, the advocate, that's Jesus' office in heaven. In the earth, Jesus said there would be another comforter that would do the same thing. He would be the advocate. He would be the standby. He would be the counselor. He would be the supporter. He would be the one that would make you know. The, there are two agreements. There's an agreement of, a, of an individual in heaven that has offices that he performs. He sent the Holy Ghost into the earth, and the Holy Ghost performs the same offices in the earth just as Jesus does in heaven. So there is a, an agreement between heaven and earth because you've got two members of the divine trinity that function, one in heaven and one in the earth in the same way. Do you see that? Then the Bible said that the Holy Spirit came in the name of Jesus. Now isn't that strange? Because Mark 16 said that Jesus said, He that believeth on me in my name he shall, and he began to talk about the fivefold things that he would do. Well now, they're now, now watch this now, the Bible said wherever two agree as touching anything, he would be in the midst. Do you remember that scripture from Mark 16 and 18 or 17 and 19, one of the two? Do you remember that? Now there was an agreement that was going on. And do you see it? There's a heavenly agreement that agrees with the work of Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. There's an earthly agreement and a heavenly agreement where those two things, according to Romans chapter 8, they can dig around in each other and find out how to make all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. You see me now? And then, here is the beautiful part of this. There is an agreement in the earth between the Holy Spirit and and the believer. There is an agreement between the two of you because both of you are functioning by the power of something that was given and provided to you because of the six works of the cross of Calvary. The Holy Spirit was sent so that he could continue to complete the work that Jesus did when he went to Calvary, when he went to the tomb, when he went to hell, when he rose from the grave, when he ascended to glory, when he sent the Holy Spirit back to man. And now, here's that agreement operating in the name of Jesus. On the other hand, there is the child of God who can operate in the same exact name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and man function in complete agreement based on the same things. Now think about that. Don't think that you don't have power. Don't think that you don't have presence. Don't think that you don't have provision because wherever two or three agree as touching anything, he is in the midst of that provision. He is in the midst of that uh, time. He is in the midst of that agreement. So when Jesus said to you, that in my name you would cast out devils. And you think that you speak a word and devils obey you. Let me tell you why they obey. Because the Holy Ghost, who is your helper, who is called alongside to help, agrees with everything Jesus says. And when you say something Jesus says, you and the Holy Spirit have an agreement and God is in the middle of it. And the next thing you know, your circumstances begin to change. Your feelings begin to change. Your ideas begin to change because the Holy Ghost in you have made a majority in the earth. Yeah, you can't get around that. The Holy Spirit in you have made a majority because the Holy Spirit was sent in the name of Jesus. He was sent to the earth to remain and dwell under the authority, now watch this, that had been won by the accomplished work of Christ during the sixfold events that surrounded the cross. 2 Timothy 1.14 says these words, Guard through the Holy Spirit. Guard through the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Now watch it now. Watch it now. Guard through the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. 
the treasure that has been entrusted to you. What treasure has been entrusted to you? What is it that heaven has entrusted to you? What is it that God has given directly to every man, woman, boy, and girl that would believe on the name of, where well, He has given you the name of Jesus. He has given you the authority that's in the name of Jesus. The authority in the exalted name of the Son of God. There is power in heaven and power in earth and power in the underworld. He has given you a treasure, ladies and gentlemen, and the Holy Ghost called alongside you to say, yes, buddy, yes, that's the truth. The Word of God is true. The name of Jesus changes faith. You have the authority and the power in the mighty name of Jesus. A treasure. It's a treasure we haphazardly use. It's a treasure we haphazardly use. We'll invoke the name of Jesus on anything. We haphazardly use the power of attorney. <laughs> and we co-sign His name to things. Now watch it now. They co-sign His name to things that are done nothing more than fulfilling the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We co-sign His name to things. Let me tell you what the Word of God wants His name co-signed to. Listen carefully now. Jesus came in the name of Jesus to lead, guide, direct, inform, reprove the world of three things. He did not come to agree with you for houses, land, money, and jobs. He did not come to agree with you on things that you would consume on your own lust. He came to agree with the things that Jesus taught, the things that Jesus said, and the promises that Jesus made. He came to reprove the world of the sin of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life, the very things that we are using and invoking the name of Jesus over the Word of God declares that He came to not fulfill those things, but to fulfill the concept that you are free from sin, that you are the righteousness of God, and that the world is going to be judged by the name of Jesus. Now in the process, the Holy Spirit is going to minister the promises of God unto you. And your life is going to be blessed. But the concept the Holy Spirit came to tell about was to tell about the spirit of truth that is in the Word of God that was in Jesus Christ that reproves and corrects the world and you of sin and reproves you of the righteousness and the position that God gave you and then lets you know that the world, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of your eye will be judged. Oh yeah! Now that doesn't sound good, does it? That doesn't sound appealing. That doesn't sound like everything you're hearing on TV. That doesn't sound like the big preachers that are preaching to 45, 55 people. Telling them that if they will believe God, God will make them rich. If you'll just believe God, God will give you a new home. If you'll give me money, God will, God will give you a new home. He'll bless you with a new home. Glory to God. And if you can't like, believe God for it. The Word of God declared that the testifier would tell the world about Jesus. Let me tell you about Jesus. May I tell you about Jesus? The Word of God said the birds of the air have a nest. The foxes have a hole. But the Son of God hath not where to lay his head. Huh? But yet what he taught to the believer and what he gave to the believer 
was the ability to be more than an overcomer through who? Christ Jesus, who died for you and who lives for you and who the plan of redemption is prepared for you that you can walk in divine health that you can walk in the wealth of God that God gives you and provides for you just like He prepares food for the birds of the air and grows the grass. God will never, ever, ever leave the righteous forsaken, my friend. The Holy Ghost has been given so that you in the name of Jesus can live in the truth and the promises of God's Holy Spirit of truth. Yeah, anybody going to give your hand back? Did not come for you to have the flesh, the, the lust of the flesh. Did not come for you to have the pride of life. Did not come for you to have the lust of the eye. He came, now watch this, so that you and your spirit man could be returned to the original position of the garden. That's what he came for. That's why Jesus came. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Well, now wait a minute. Because everybody says, now the works of the devil. Works, what are the works of the devil? What are the works of the devil? The works of the devil was when man's spirit deceitfully was killed in the Garden of Eden. That is the work of sin. That is the work of separation. The work of destruction of the inner man. The testifier came as the legal authority from heaven that was sent in the name of Jesus to minister to your spirit so that legally when Jesus died on Calvary and destroyed the works of the devil, he reopened the plan of the born-again spirit man. And he said to, John, to, the, to the man in John chapter 3, he said, you must be what? Born again. Your spirit had to be reborn. The testifier has come to tell you that in you I'm being sent in the name of Jesus to rebirth your spirit man. To legally take back from the devil what he stole from God through the heresy and treason of Adam and Eve and give it back to man. Now listen to me ladies and gentlemen. The devil has been disarmed where your sin is concerned. He has been destroyed where your spirit man is. In other words, that comforter that is called alongside to help now has the legal right in the name of Jesus to live dwell and be in you, on you, and upon you every day, every second, everywhere that you may go. He has the legal right of heaven to stand in the gap for you concerning who you used to be. You were lost. You were undone. Your sin was real. Every man after Adam and Eve Every man's spirit, every man's inner man lived in death. Someone asked me the other day, said, well, now who was Cain's father? Because I'm hearing that the devil was Cain's father. The devil was not Cain's father. Adam was Cain's father. But the father of sin ruled in Cain's spirit man. And up until Jesus came, Every man was under that curse of a dead spirit. But glory be to God. I am now under a new covenant of a new man. And that new man lives in me. And I can communicate with the God of glory. And the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus can lift me up to a new realm. A new realm I can be translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. My spirit man can know God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. My spirit man, my inner man, can know the power of a living God. Hallelujah. Oh, how, how wonderful. 
wonderful because now living in me Living on the inside of me is the divine agent of glory. He's my helper. He's my advocate. He's my counselor. He's my standby. He's my might strength. He is in me day by day, moment by moment, living in me. The testifier is telling me about the spirit of truth that came from the right hand of God, infused himself into the world, and Paul called him the Lord, the exalted Lord of glory. Well, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand that glory. He lives in me. I have an agreement. But watch it now. Heaven and earth have an agreement. Jesus seated at the right hand of God. See that? The Holy Spirit infused into the earth. Balance. Heaven and earth are balanced because what's going on in heaven now watch it now can now go on in the earth. What's happening in glory can now happen in the earth. Legally. And the devil can't do nothing about it. Huh? He can't do nothing about it. Because his legal right to your spirit man was destroyed by what Jesus did in the sixfold works of the cross. And now the devil went from, listen to this, the Old Testament, he was your opponent. He was your adversary. To the New Testament, where he is your slanderer and accuser. It is a completely different dynamic. In the Old Testament, he opposed everything because he ruled man's spirit. In the Old Testament, he was the adversary of everything God wanted to do. But when Jesus Christ came and the sixfold works of the cross occurred, at that moment, he went from being the adversary and opponent to a destroyed, destructed work because the spirit of man was brought back to God and now he can only accuse you and he can only slander you because the man that believes in God has heaven and earth balanced and in agreement on what God has said about you. Someone said, Pastor, what did he say? What did he say? Tell me, tell me, what did he say? Tell me, what did he say? Well, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, he said that he had been made sin so that you might be made. Oh, glory to God. The righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And the righteousness of a living God because of what Jesus did for me. Glory to God. Tell me again, preacher. Just tell me one more time. He has been made sin for you. So that you could be made the righteousness of God. Do you see the balance? Do you see it there? He was made sin. The balance of it was you were made the righteousness. The testifier that's on the inside of you says you are made this. This over here no longer has dominion over you. Sin no longer has dominion over you. The Spirit of God that is in agreement with what Jesus has done for you, that He sat down at the right hand of God, there He serves as your advocate, support, counselor, strengthener, and standby. Sent down into the earth a testifier. And what does He testify of? He says, I, in the name of Jesus, have come into the world to tell you, I'm your support, I'm your counselor, I'm your strengthener, I'm your advocate, and I'm your standby. Me and Jesus agree. We have balanced out heaven and earth. <laughs> my God. My God. In my spirit today, it's just leaping on the inside of me. <clears throat> you can handle it any way you want to. But my spirit is leaping today. 
And then he said these words right here. He said, in my name. In my name. He said, I'm going to send the balancer. In my name. Now watch it now. Watch it now. He said, I'm going to send the Spirit of God in my name. And the Spirit of God is going to proceed. Now listen to that. He came out of glory. In the name of Jesus. To remain in you. To dwell in you. Now let's just ask this question. Why? <clears throat> Why would he be sent in the name of Jesus to dwell in the believer? Because Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, He that believeth in me, in my name, now, wait a minute. So we got heaven and we got earth with two entities, another comforter, functioning one in heaven and the other in the earth, accomplishing the same things in heaven and in earth. And then we have a treasure that is in us, the Holy Spirit, that gives us, now watch it now, heaven and earth are balanced. And the believer and the spirit function and operate in the spirit world in the exact same authority. Now hear it now, hear what I just said. You who are filled by the Holy Spirit are operating in the exact same authority that the Spirit of God is operating in in the earth. He was sent in His name and Jesus said because you are a believer in Me and because you know Me then My name belongs to you. So when you invoke the name of Jesus on things that are outside the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, outside of those things that are consumable, but on those things that are spiritual, when you invoke the testifier who testifies of the spirit of truth, when you invoke that name, and it is invoked by the word of truth that he is giving you, that he is teaching you, that he is preaching you, that he is sharing when you give that name, the Holy Ghost has no option but to begin to move on the thing that the name of Jesus has been set to work for or against in the earth because the two agree. The testifier agrees. Now watch it now. He will testify of me. Well, what are you testifying of? What is it in your life you're testifying of? What are you testifying about? Huh? What you testify about? Come on now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What you testify? Are you testifying about the same thing? Because the only way you're going to get in agreement with the Holy Ghost is to testify about the things He's testified about. You see me? Yeah. You're going to have to testify about the promises of God. You're going to have to testify about the Spirit of Truth. You're going to have to bear witness to the Spirit of Truth. You're going to have to come into agreement with the Holy Ghost that when you invoke the name of Jesus, it is in agreement with what the Holy Spirit is teaching you about the spirit of truth. And you're going to have to invoke it and invoke it and invoke it and agree with the testifier and agree with the testifier until such time that you call that thing that is not as though it is until it is. Oh yeah. You 
see, we've got a balance between heaven and earth. And Jesus did not leave you comfortless. He put a balance on earth between the name of Jesus and the believer and the testifier. And when the testifier and the name of the believer talk about the same thing, when the testifier of the name of the believer begin to talk about the same, what is that same thing? Priest, what is that same thing? Everything the Holy Ghost did, everything that Jesus taught the Holy Ghost would do, led you back to one single piece of Scripture. You know what it was? He said, He shall glorify me. Everything the testifier has ever done was in agreement with what Jesus taught. Are you in agreement in your spirit? Are you in agreement in your words? Are you in agreement in the study of the Word of God? Are you in agreement with the testifier? When you get in agreement with the testifier, your word will flourish like a rose in the desert. Your life will begin to be blessed and the Holy Ghost will manifest Himself in you like never before. When your word and the testifier's word get in balance, bless God. The name of Jesus will begin to do great and mighty things in your word. Listen to what the word of God said. The word of God said that in Mark chapter 16, he said that after that he had gone away, sat down at the right hand of God. All of a sudden, the word of God said, and the Lord worked with them in signs, miracles, and wonders. How do you get close your eyes? Do you want the Lord to work with you? Do you really want the Lord to work with you? I would dare to say that if I said to you, raise your hand if you want God to work with you, everyone in this building would raise their hand and you wouldn't think twice about it. I want God to work with me. I want to be God's partner. I want to be God's friend. Then I have to ask you a question. Has the spirit of truth reared up inside of you like a kicking horse? Has the spirit of truth reared up on the inside of you in such a way that you can agree with the Word of God because you know it so well. That the Spirit of Truth has come into you. That the Spirit of Truth, the words that the testifier is teaching you, has ministered to you in such a way that you can literally say, I agree with what the testifier is telling me about the Spirit of Truth and in the name of Jesus, I can claim that for my own because the Spirit of Truth and I are operating in total agreement. Now watch it now. Watch it now on spiritual things. Spiritual things. Not things that the Bible said will be thrown into the fire as wood, hay, and stubble. But on spiritual things. The Holy Ghost is a spiritual man. The testifier testifies on spiritual things. If you want to go deeper with God, you need to get in touch with the spiritual thing. The spiritual man. You need to get in touch with the testifier. Then you need to get in touch with agreement with what he's teaching you and put the balance in there on the name of Jesus. The earth's balancing act. What the Holy Ghost came in to do was to fulfill the work that Jesus did. What Jesus gave you was His name and the legal right to walk in the Spirit of God and thereby fulfill the works that Jesus did. But we get caught up in this world and what we see, what we feel, what others have. We get caught up in numbers. We get caught up in how many people are in the church and how many people aren't. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I'm caught up in. I'm caught up in following, listening to, and being led by the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of me. I'm caught up in understanding the Word of Truth and seeing how I can take the Word of Truth and appropriate it to my life. Now in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to do something. 
I've told you about an agreement in heaven, and I've told you about an agreement in the earth. One goes from Jesus to the Holy Spirit. The other goes from the Holy Spirit to man. There are agreements there. But you're going to have to get in agreement. You're going to have to get in agreement. You're going to have to get out of the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. You're going to have to get out and away from, from the things that God has promised you that He will provide for you because He loves you. And you're going to have to get into the spirit realm where you can agree with the testifier. Now as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, you've heard the word of God today. I don't know about you, but the Holy Spirit has spoken today to me. The Holy Spirit has ministered to me. The Holy Spirit is leaping on the inside of me, telling me, that the testifier who agrees with the Word of God and the believer who uses the Word of God in agreement with the testifier is an indomitable, indestructible force in the world that the devil who can only accuse you and slander you has no means to stop. Now what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Shallowness? Or do you want to get on par and on task with the testifier? The testifier. The testifier. What is he testifying in you today? What is your spirit saying to you right now? What is your spirit saying inside of you? Some of you, he's saying, you need to get in the Word of God deep. Some of you, he's saying, you need to match the Word of God with prayer. Some of you, he's saying to you, you need to close your mouth because your words are contrary <laughs> to the testifier. Some of you, he's saying that I will bless your words when your words begin to match up with the spirit of truth. What is he saying to you? What is he saying to you? Well, today I'm telling you the answer is for you to get in agreement with the Spirit of God. And for you, not only to be in agreement with the Spirit of God, but for you to begin to operate in the Spirit of truth. Now, if you are committed to do that, if you are committed to operate with the testifier, and to get in the Word of God, and to study the Word of God, and to pray in the Word of God, and to read the Word of God, so that you, in the name of Jesus, can come through the Spirit of truth, the very Word that needs to grow on the inside of you, and go to the testifier, <coughs> and He operate in the name of Jesus on your knees. <coughs> you too have to marry. He is the spirit of truth. You need to know the spirit of truth. And then the spirit of truth will allow you to operate and function in the name of Jesus. And he already functions that way. And there is agreement. Are you ready for that commitment today? If you're ready for that commitment, I want you to stand to your feet. And I want you to raise your hands. And I want you to say, God, I'm committed today. I'm committed today. I'm committed today. I'm committed today to the word of the Spirit of truth because my pastor has shown me in the Spirit of God that when I get in the Spirit of truth, I get in agreement in this earth with the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit's agreement in my life. And the way to get there is through the Spirit of truth which He is teaching and employing on the inside of me, reproving me and correcting me. And today, I open my heart to submit myself, my life, my words, my time, to come into the spirit of truth and allow the spirit of truth to give me the right to use the word of God, the name of Jesus, as agreement with the Holy Ghost. Now, spirit of God, manifest, as I do this, manifest yourself in me. <coughs> manifest yourself in me.
Nanny, I promise you today, church, the testifier will testify. The testifier will testify. He will come in you and minister out of you. And life will be blessed by the Spirit of truth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this church and these people. God, I have told them how. I have told them what. Now, Lord, I didn't tell them anything. Your Spirit preached to them today. Your Spirit showed them today. The Holy Spirit speaking through the prophet of God has shared with them today the way To get around all the questions and answers and wonders of where is God? And why isn't this working for me? <clears throat> the Holy Ghost has told us today how to appropriate this and make it work for us. Now God, by uplifted hands we receive that today. By uplifted hands we take it today. By uplifted hands we're going to be different today. Because now we know the truth. Now we know the exact truth of how this thing operates. And we receive it in the name of Jesus. We receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive it. I want you to say that with me. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Say it, say it, say it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, I submit myself to you. Say it. I submit myself to you. And I receive today in the name of Jesus the spirit of truth that will make agreement with me and manifest itself, himself, in my life. I receive it today. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Glory to God. Church, I, I've been around this thing a long time. If I asked for a show of hands and said, how many of you ever heard that before? I would venture to say there wouldn't be anybody. You know why I know that? I preached this thing all my life and I didn't know it either. I never connected the two until I began to dig into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the work of the testifier. And ladies and gentlemen, He'll manifest Himself in you when you manifest yourself in the Spirit of Truth. And the two of you can get on that. Heaven and earth have already agreed. All that's left is for you to get in the spirit of truth. And in the name of Jesus, and agree with the testifier. For wherever two or three agree is touching anything, he said, I am God in the midst. You know what that means to me? That's all I need to know. That's what it means to me. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know no more. All I need to know is how to get God in the mix. Well, you've been told. You've been told. Amen? Amen. All right. Tommy, why don't you pray for us? Dismiss him. Well, we thank you for this service we've had today. Thank you to go with us as we go out and about. On our way today, watch over us. In Jesus' name.